Hey, what's up? It's Václav here. This is a very special video. It's uh, kind of very advanced, detailed. Um, I will try to walk you through a piece of code, which is an experiment. I don't know how it's gonna go. I'm interested in how many people are gonna watch this video and how many are gonna make it all the way through. But uh, it's related to the uh, two videos I made about automating heating in home assistant. And uh, one part of the automation is in, done in uh, AppDemon, which is a component of Home Assistant where you can uh, very flexibly add piece of code, piece of Python code, and uh, embed it into the Home Assistant. And uh, very flexibly you can write your own uh, things. So what I'd like to do in this video is I would like to show you how you can install the app daemon, how you can configure it, and then I'm gonna take this piece of code I used for home automation and I'm gonna open it, uh, show you where you can get it so you can follow me, and I'm gonna walk you through the code, show you uh, what it does, the different parts, you know, where you can read the configuration, where you can configure the triggers and the uh, events that are uh, triggered by those triggers and all of this uh, programming. It's not very difficult. I think the uh, Python is now used even on high schools uh, in math classes. So I suppose even if, if you're not a programmer, uh, you can follow that. And I'm not a programmer either, so if you are a programmer, please do not criticize me because I'm not professional. Uh, I used to program uh, as a hobby like 20 years ago, but I have uh, learned Python recently, so I'm sure uh, there are things that could be done better. Uh, but uh, I like that very much, and uh, I think I've improved uh, since the beginning, so that's why I'm brave and I'm sharing this with you, even though maybe it's not perfect. So uh, let's come with me and uh, I'll show you how to get started, how to install uh, the uh, app daemon into the Haas.io or Home Assistant. If you use Haas.io, it's very simple. Go to the supervisor, add-on store, and there from the uh, Home Assistant community add-ons, uh, click on the app daemon 4 and hit install. Wait a few seconds for it to install and then you're ready to go. Make sure the start on boot is turned on and then uh, you can hit start to start the app daemon. I'm not gonna do that because I'm still using the uh, app daemon 3 because of some compatibility issues with Dialogflow but if you don't use Dialogflow uh, just go ahead and use the app daemon 4. If you don't see the Home Assistant community add-ons, just go to the repositories, take this URL, https addons.community, add them in here, hit add, and then the community add-ons are gonna appear. So with that, we have it installed and we can go ahead and configure it. If you don't use Haas.io, uh, what you could do is go to the Home Assistant page, search for AppDemon, there is the documentation, and on the very bottom, there is a link to the AppDemon project documentation page. We will need this page uh, even if you use Haas.io because the next step, the configuration, is described in here. And there is also the AppDemon API reference, which we're going to use if we're going to start uh, doing own uh, development in AppDemon. So for the installation, if you use Docker or if you're running Home Assistant in Windows or uh, Rapsbian, uh, follow the instructions here. I'm not going to go into detail, but just go to this page, follow it, and get it installed. Once you have it installed, uh, you need to configure it. So there's a configuration section. You do that in the file appdaemon.yaml. If you have installed appdaemon from the Docker, the file is going to be already there. You just fill it in. If you install it uh, somehow else, there are the instructions how to create that. So what we'll need to do is we will need to configure our Home Assistant URL and we will need to get and configure the Long Life Access token. So that you do from the Home Assistant, from the users. Here you can create uh, on the very bottom Long Life Access token. So you create it, uh, copy it and paste it in the configuration file. So with that, our app daemon is uh, installed and configured, so we can start using it. There is a directory, app daemon, where it lives. Uh, there is the configuration file, app daemon.yaml. 
and uh, here we have the applications which are going to be empty for you right now. There's obviously two ways how you can get an application. Uh, one is to download it somewhere either from github or from the community store. You can go in here in the community store there is Abdemon apps so you can search for them go through and you can install it and start using it there's documentation for each the other option is you can write your own which is what we're going to be talking about today i'm going to be explaining it on the example of the heating uh, Abdemon app you can get it uh, from this url which is linked uh, down there below in description uh, so go to the heating there is the actual heating Abdemon files so or heating control.pi and uh, there is a documentation so it says you need to install Abdemon you need to make sure that you have voluptus and datetime included in python packages so let's make sure we have that go to supervisor go to the Abdemon and add those into python packages uh, and then copy the files from here the easiest is just say clone or download download the zip file it'll download everything to a zip file to your desktop and from there you just copy it uh, to the apps directory so the heating control in here and then you configure it in the apps.yaml so there is my configuration and uh, it is uh, documented in here. I'm not gonna go and explain the configuration. This is not the point of this video. That's the other video which I have referred multiple times already. The point I'm trying to make it if you're developing your own app uh, apart from the module and class which is always there and it's up to you how flexible you would like to make your application, how configurable you would like to make it. In general I would avoid uh, hard coding names of entities and so on in the Abdemon I would put them in the configuration so you can change it later on without the need to go to the code. So we have that, uh, we have the configuration, we have the files in this directory and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open this file and I'm going to walk you through the code and show you what you need to do if you would like to start writing your own Abdemon apps. So I'm gonna open it in the Microsoft Visual Studio code and here we are. So what you need to do is uh, there is two or three parts that are necessary that you always have to do. First thing you always need to do you need to import this uh, module uh, which is the AppDemon API. The second thing which you need to do is you need to create this uh, class which is going to be using a base class has.has which is the abdemon api class and the third thing what you need to do is you need to have this method initialize which is called uh, when you start the abdemon or when you start the abdemon application to initialize the instance so what it typically does it reads the configuration and it sets the listeners so these are the little event handlers programs that listen to the states of different entities and they act upon changes and that's pretty much all there is so let me walk you through what I did for the heating control so I have added few more modules in here uh, most important the voluptus which I use to validate the configuration is really a lovely module and I'm gonna show it to you in the initialize method and then I have definition of the constants in here because you don't want to uh, hard code them in the code so you want to define them here up front so if you would like to come later and change for example uh, you would like to name the modes differently than I have maybe in some local language you can change them in here and uh, the code will keep working. Then there is a few other constants like the names of the attributes for the configurations which I have defined here as well but, but uh, those normally don't want to change. So uh, with that uh, we have the initialize method. So here I am defining the scheme for the voluptus. What it does is it's defining how the configuration should look like. So name of the attributes and type of the attributes and whether it's required or whether it's optional. So here you see the module and the class and all the other attributes I have defined. One of them is rooms which is a list uh, that is defined here up there as well. And then what I do is I load the config into this app scheme. 
and what it does is it will validate it and if there is something invalid it will tell me what is wrong and I will finish in here. So this is how easy the validation of the configuration is. The other benefit of Voluptus is if I have some default values, it will automatically get them assigned and it will also do type conversion if I use that. So I'm using this validated config uh, to store the configuration into internal class variables. So the entity ID of the heating switch uh, and some others. Uh, then I have the dictionary of the rooms and then I will set up the listeners. So I have the entity ID somebody home, which I have received here from the configuration. And if it changes, I will call method someone home change. So this is event handler, which I have in here, and I'm gonna show you what it does. And I do the same when the uh, heating is changed, when the vacation temperature is changed, or where the mode has changed. And then I go into individual rooms and in the individual rooms, I set up listeners for the uh, day and night temperatures and for the day night switch. And once I'm in the room, I will go through all the thermostats in the room. And again, I will set up listeners for when the thermostat changes. So with that, I have all the listeners set up. I will do the initial update of the heating and of the thermostats. And the initialization is finished. So all we do here is just wait for some event to happen so we can handle it. Now for the event handlers, I have uh, different event handles here that react to different changes. Theoretically, I could have had uh, one handler and they will always update heating and all the thermostats, but I didn't want to do that because what I'd like to do is I would like to always update only the entities which have changed, which needs to be updated. So for example, if the temperature for the vacation mode changes, I will only update the heating and the thermostat if I am in the mode of vacation. Otherwise, I don't need to update anything. If a thermostat changes, I will update only this particular thermostat entity ID. In all of those, I'm calling methods update heating and update thermostat. So let me show you what they do. So the update heating will first check temperature in all the rooms. Let's look at that. Uh, so it will go through all the rooms one by one and in each room it will check the temperature sensor in that room and it will compare this temperature to the target temperature based on whether it's vacation or whether it's high and low. It will compare this temperature to the target and it will do three things. It will uh, analyze whether uh, all of the temperatures were above the target or not and then whether some of the temperatures were below the target and here I'm actually decreasing the target by some offset so that the switching on and off will be less frequent. And I'm also uh, checking for the minimum temperature. So I have that and then I get the uh, mode and then depending on the mode and depending on the temperature in the house, I decide whether the heating should be on or off. So this is the function which is setting the heating. One thing I do is I first figure out whether the heating is currently on or off and then I compare it with the parameter whether the heating is what it is supposed to be and if not I will then change it. I could have probably just forced the turn on or turn off but I'm doing it this way uh, also for the logging. So that's the heating. Uh, then I have the updating thermostats and for that I'm going through all the rooms and in each room I read the current temperature and I figure out what is the target temperature. I also read the heating mode and then I will set the thermostat which is another method and what it does is it essentially calls the home assistant service uh, climate set temperature but on top of that I am sort of hacking the uh, default downforce attributes by adding some additional ones. So I'm adding the current temperature attribute in here. I'm adding the HVAC mode and I have to also update the list of available HVAC modes. And with that I'm adding those additional attributes so as you saw on the dashboard the uh, thermostat looks much better. So with that we went through the update thermostat, uh, update heating, in those I've been using method get target room temperature. It's actually very simple. It's checking whether the uh, day night switch in that particular room is on or off and based on that 
it will return what is the target temperature. Uh, I've been using that in multiple functions, so I created that as, as a method, also to keep the code clean. I also have uh, two methods uh, to get the target temperature based on uh, some parameters. Uh, if I ask to get a target temperature on the sensor or on the thermostat, it will search for the right context and it will return the right target temperature. I use that uh, for the uh, listeners. Set thermostat, set heating, uh, we already went through that. And then I have few basic methods that basically return the value, but they do some checking and conversion to lowercase and so on. And that's really all there is. There is the initialize, we have the event listeners, uh, we have the uh, two handlers for updating heating, updating thermostat, and then I have a few internal methods to get attributes and uh, do some calculations. Congratulations, you made it through to the end. Uh, it wasn't that difficult, was it? Uh, I think the Abdemon is uh, very interesting. It's, uh, it's very difficult to get started because uh, the learning curve is quite steep. But once you get uh, through the start, it's actually very simple because um, you don't have those constraints like you have in a Node-RED or in a YAML automation where uh, if you would like to do different things based on different conditions and you wouldn't like to uh, you know, maybe call one thing after the other and if something happens do something else and make loops. This is very difficult in YAML, it's slightly easier in Node-RED, but then in Node-RED you have uh, other limitations and you don't have them in here. Uh, it's uh, programming, but very easy programming. So I hope you understand it now. I use it for uh, this. I also use it for automating the tilt angle for the uh, for the for the uh, covers. So I calculate the tilt angle depending on weather temperature. You saw the videos. If not, uh, please go and watch them. They are linked up here. And. Uh, I also use it uh, for dialog flow where I am uh, querying different parameters of the house and I am uh, actually translating them into, into a uh, string that is then uh, responded by the uh, Google Assistant. So I used to do that in the intent script uh, in YAML again, but then I found it uh, much easier and much more flexible to do it in AppDemon since I already had AppDemon. That again, you can call different procedures. You don't have to repeat things. You can reuse pieces of code. So I like that as well. So uh, let me know in the comments how you like that. Uh, if you did, maybe I will make something similar in the future. And if not, uh, I hope it was not a complete waste of time. All right. So uh, see you in the next video. Bye.